Hi, I'm Mark Sipp at Crocker Farm Auction. I'm here to discuss an important example of Anna Pottery that we'll be selling at our March 23rd auction. This flask, it, to my knowledge, is a unique piece. Um, really wonderful piece. Of course, you can see it has the applied snake handle, so typical of their most iconic works. This wonderful chip carved surface. And the size is great too. This is much larger than what we would consider a, a, a typical flask size in American stoneware. You can see it's wheel thrown and it was flattened on each side um, to give it that classic pumpkin seed flask form and even the spout has some nice delicate tooling. The, the, uh, the snake includes wonderful scaling throughout. You can, you can see that. I don't know if you can get that detail in the shot, but it's actually raised scaling throughout. Um, very, very lifelike, and after applying the snake, a few little ad additional incised features were added. Some incised scaling to the top of the head right there, and some incised scaling on the side, no doubt covering up where the potter had smoothed out the raised scales after applying it. Even on the underside of the snake, you don't always see this. And this, again, is going to be difficult to film. There's actually those wide scales that you would typically see um, on the underside of a snake. So a very lifelike, anatomically correct sculpture of a snake forming the handle. You can see how it constricts the neck and curves down the side of the jug. Wonderful thing. This chip carving is also fantastic. It almost looks like reptile scales. And we had a wonderful salt glazed, uh, much smaller jug that did not have the elaborate inscriptions of this piece that actually was found at a thrift store years ago. We sold that um, several years ago. And that was the only other piece that I can recall coming to market anytime uh, recently that had this kind of chip carving. It's the only other piece actually that I can even think of off the top of my head. Um, a very neat practice done after dipping the piece in Albany slip. It was then cut away in various spots. You can see it says little brown jug at the shoulder. It's a classic Kirkpatrick slogan you find on a lot of they're simple little brown jugs and even on better pieces like this. On the back, it has this wonderful incised inscription, no handicraft can with our art compare. We make our pots of what we potters are. And this fantastic uh, incised inscription um, actually dates back, we actually found that it's, it's a centuries old uh, rhyming couplet that potters have used in the past. Additionally, it's inscribed, at last it biteth like a serpent, which is a biblical reference taken uh, from the Old Testament referring uh, to the dangers of alcohol consumption. So again, this is temperance related with not only the snake, but also with the actual words incised on the reverse. The underside, again, is touting the abilities of the Kirkpatrick brothers as not just potters, uh, but, but as creators of something. Some people that could take humble resources like clay and turn it into something very beautiful. So it says on the underside, the potter said to the clay, beware. And George Orr, in his very, um, you know, almost narcissistic view of himself as the greatest art potter that ever lived, actually incised that on his pieces too. We know there is a connection and an influence between the Kirkpatricks and the Mad Potter of Biloxi, George Orr. The underside is also uh, signed by the Kirkpatrick brothers, Anna Pottery, and dated February 23rd, 1884. And you can see it also says high water right there. And in doing our research, we found that this date corresponds to the breaching of the Ohio River, 
which caused all sorts of flooding problems throughout the Midwest. Uh, of course, the state of Illinois, where the Kirkpatrick's potted, all the way to Pittsburgh. So this, this was a, a well-documented um, meteorological event that affected a lot of people. This piece survives in immaculate condition. A lot of times when you see these snakes, they have re-glued parts, damaged parts, missing parts, because you can see they're so fragile. And one little bump here or there, um, and it's, and it's uh, broken for good. But this piece survives in remarkable, essentially as-made condition. To have a piece that embodies the concept of a potter as both a maker of utilitarian uh, object that was meant to be used to hold water, food, what have you, um, but then also the role of the potter as a true artist, as this piece represents, both utilitarian and yet highly artistic, you know, verging on what we would call art pottery, made around the time right when the art pottery movement was gaining steam in America. Um, and then of course, you know, reflecting that in its form, but also actually outright saying it in two places on the, on the, on the flask uh, with this great rhyming couplet on the reverse and this clever slogan about being where on the underside. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest examples of Anna Pottery we've ever sold and it really explains what these brothers were all about and what they were trying to do. And we're very excited to offer it on March 23rd auction.